Hey there everybody. In this video we are going to learn about gravitational fields um, and more specifically Isaac Newton's grand law of universal gravitation. So the year is 1687 and this guy by the name of Isaac Newton who was in his 20s I believe at the time published a book that today is referred to as the Principia in which he laid out the laws of motion that we've learned and his idea of universal gravitation. The whole purpose of the law of universal gravitation was Newton was trying to explain the motion of the planets and things like the moon. So this character by the name of Kepler had written down some laws that accurately described the motion of the planets. Mr. Newton was trying to explain Kepler's laws and explain why the planets move the way that they do. In order to do that, he used mathematics and um, mathematical reasoning starting from his laws of motion to explain and justify his claims. So that's why the book was called Philosophe Naturalis Principia Mathematica, the philosophy natural principles of math, um, because he used mathematical reasoning, not just prose and argumentation. And this book basically revolutionized physics and astronomy. As far as important books go, this one would probably weigh up towards the top. And so in the uh, prefix of the Principia, Mr. Newton wrote that rational mechanics will be the science of motion resulting from any forces whatsoever, and the forces required to produce any motions. And so his book is basically about forces, which is what we've been learning so far in physics. So the new and scary idea here is that things could happen across a distance. Newton explained the motion of the moon, by saying that the moon is drawn towards, we would say attracted to, the earth. Basically what he was saying is that the earth pulled the moon, or exerted a force on the moon, over a large distance without touching it. Which at the time was a pretty scary idea. People referred to it as spooky action at a distance. He further claimed, that because the effect on the, of the Earth on the Moon would get weaker as the Earth and Moon were farther apart, he said that this force was inversely proportional to the distance. More specifically, he claimed that it obeyed an inverse square law. What that means is that it is proportional to 1 over the distance squared. And so when you see the term inverse square law, that's what that means, 1 over r squared. He also showed that the force was proportional to both masses of the Earth and the Moon, specifically the gravitational mass of both the Earth and the Moon. And then using some third law reasoning, remember that means that forces always occur in pair, pairs, he argued that there should be the same force existing between all objects that have mass. And so you are an object with mass, the pencil in your hand is an object with mass. He argues that there should be a force between you and your pencil due to the same um, attraction that occurs between the Earth and the Moon. And later on, this force will become to be called gravity. And so that's why it's referred to as universal gravitation, because it exists between all objects with mass. So let's consider two random objects, one of mass m1, the second of mass m2, like that whose centers are distance r apart. So there's an attractive force between those two things. And so we would draw arrows going um, inward, label those force gravity. And Mr. Newton claims the force of gravity is proportional to the distance r squared on bottom, and then m1 times m2 on top, the product of the masses. And so that's a proportionality, and we can do a lot with it, um, but we can't get exact values of forces in newtons until we turn the proportional sign into an equal sign. And the way that we do that is we introduce a constant of proportionality, just a number that we need in order to make the units all work out correctly. Um, and that constant, we're going to give the symbol G, and G stands for the gravitation constant. And we're going to see in class how we measured this thing, but it has a value of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 
newton time meter square per coulomb square. And this was measured after Isaac Newton's death by a guy by the name of Henry Cavendish, who's a kind of important fellow. We're going to kind of look at that experiment in class. So kind of another way to frame the idea of the force of gravity between all objects is to talk about it more in terms of a field. So gravity is called a field force. It's an important term to know because it extends over a distance. And what a field means is that we can describe the space surrounding an object in general and not just the interaction between that one object and another object in particular. And so a field is a more general idea than just a force that acts over a distance. So it's important to understand that a field associates a physical value of something with every point in space, both direction and magnitude i.e. fields or vectors. So if we think about the interaction between the Earth and the Moon as being a result of the Moon being in the Earth's gravitational field, it gives us a little bit more general picture. Um, and for other forces, the idea of a field will be even more important. Okay, so let's kind of talk a little bit about gravitational fields. Again, they're caused by gravitational mass. And when we consider a field, we'll just consider one object at a time. So we'll say of an object. Again, it is a vector. For gravitational fields, they always point towards the object which creates the field. So gravity is always attractive. So, for example, if we drew the gravitational field surrounding the Earth, it might look something like this. There's the Earth there are some gravitational field lines. As we move farther away, the gravitational field gets weaker. And so we would indicate that by drawing shorter vectors. And as we got even farther away, those would get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so that's what a gravitational field looks like. It's just vectors pointing towards the thing that creates the gravitational field. In order to calculate the magnitude of the gravitational field, which we're going to give the symbol little g, we simply divide the force on an object that's in the field by the mass of that object. The reason being, we want this to be the same for all objects. And so if we take some random mass m and we put it in the Earth's gravitational field, it'll experience a gravitational force pulling it towards the Earth. Little g, the gravitational field, is defined as the force on that object divided by the mass of that object. And it will have the um, unit of newtons per kilogram. So, we already have an equation for the force of gravity. That's Mr. Newton's equation, the gm1 m2 over r squared equation. And so if we let the little mass m be m1, and we let the mass of the Earth be m2, and the distance between their centers be r, then we could write the equation kind of sort of like this. And so if we take that and we divide it by the mass of that little object, which is m1, the m's go away and we're left with an equation that just depends on the mass of the Earth. So it's important that we understand that the gravitational field is going to be the same for any object that we put at that location put a bigger mass there, we'd get a bigger force, but the gravitational field would not change. And again, that's kind of one of the reasons why the gravitational field is a more useful way to think about it than gravitational force. Okay, so if we get close to the surface of the Earth, or any planet for that matter, the, the gravitational field is basically uniform. And what uniform means is the same everywhere. And that's true for two reasons. One, the R doesn't really change that much. Like if we go up 100 feet, we're not really changing our distance from the center of the Earth by a whole lot. And the surface is approximately flat as you get close to the Earth's surface. So from our perspective, like in a classroom, for example, the Earth kind of looks like that. And the gravitational field kind of looks like that. 
and it has a value of 9.8 newtons per kilogram pointing downward. Near the surface of the Earth, we would refer to the force of gravity as weight. It's kind of important we understand that when somebody says weight, we're talking about that force of gravity pulling you down. Okay, so here's some things that they try to trick you up on in the AP exam as pertains to gravitational fields. One, they don't like to ask you questions so it's just like, find the gravitational field. They like to ask you questions where you have to use proportional reasoning. Like, for example, if you have a planet that's twice as big in radius and half the mass is the Earth, what is G on this planet? So they like to ask questions where you have to manipulate equations but not necessarily solve for anything. You just kind of have to use proportional reasoning. And then the second trickeration that they'll throw out, out at you is density. Remember that density can be related to mass, because density is mass over volume, and radius can be related to volume, because volume of a sphere is like four-thirds pi r cubed. And so those are the two kind of mathematical tricks that the AP exam likes to throw out there. So just kind of be wary about those, and we'll kind of work on practicing those a little bit in class. The real purpose of this, next stop, we're going to outer space. Till then, ta-ta.